Hello, everyone. My name is Sophie. Um, I'm a chef from Chefs of Yoga, also a yoga instructor. Um, I'm happy that you guys are here to join me. We're going to do a one hour flow session today. Um, just make sure you have a yoga mat. Um, you're wearing comfortable clothes. No other props are needed. Um, so we're going to start today um, in a seated position. Uh, I prefer cross-legged. You could um, sit on your heels. If you do have a block, you could sit on that. Um, we're going to do a little bit of pranayama, which is a uh, breathing practice in yoga. Um, doing this, it is the morning. It is kind of cold out, so just to warm up the body a bit. Uh, so this one specific technique is called uh, Nadi Shodhana. So Nadi standing for your life channels. And I think it's very similar actually to uh, your central nervous system. So kind of this network of firing synapses. And this way we can like just start to move our body a little bit without actual a lot of physical movement. So just by controlling our breath. So what we're going to do is take your pointer and your middle finger and put it on your third eye or just right in between your eyebrows. And then you'll take your thumb and that'll sit on your right nostril. And then your ring finger will sit on your left nostril. And then so we're gonna start breathing, holding your left nostril down in through your, nostril, your right nostril. And then switch at the top of your inhale and then exhale through your left nostril. And then you're gonna go in the other way. So in through your left, switch, and then out through your right. And that's one round. So we'll aim for three. Uh, we can all do it at our own pace. It's regular breathing, you're not, retaining or holding your breath at the top or at the exhale. So in your own time, and you can keep your eyes closed or you can keep them just partly open, but just make sure your face is nice and relaxed. Good, and slowly open your eyes. And then if you're not already, come to a cross-legged position. And then from here, you guys may have heard of cat-cow. So normally that's done in a flat top. Um, but I find that there is actually a lot more space for flexion, extension of your back. Um, without putting a lot of pressure on your wrist by sitting cross-legged, hands on your knees. And then start shifting towards the front of the room, chest nice and wide. And then as you exhale, you come to the back of the room, curving your back the other way. And then you can start going clockwise, counterclockwise, up to you. Make sure the movement is slow, controlled. You're in no rush whatsoever.
Inhale, moving forward. Exhale, moving backwards. And then when you're ready, switch directions. And keeping your neck just nice and relaxed. Maybe letting it hang a bit low when you're moving backwards. And then really start to feel out those kinks. Good. Just give a little shake of the arms. So that being said, there was a lot of movement on the wrists there. So to warm up our wrists before our flow practice, we're going to do a little bit of uh, some wrist movements. So just keep taking your fists in a ball and then start moving them in whatever direction you would like. And then switching direction. So I find this kind of wrist warm up to be the most helpful, especially for chefs who, uh, who work in the kitchen, those long hours, you're constantly chopping, chopping away at something. And by the end of the day, your wrists are extremely tired, they're sore, and you really don't have a chance to kind of let them loose and warm them up in a healthy way. So then after going in the opposite direction, you can start to flick as if you had really wet hands, just trying to flick some of that water off away from you. And then flip your hands around to face you and do the same flicking motion. You start to feel a little bit of a burn in your forearms, that's normal. Good. It was just a little shake out. And then from here, I'll do a little bit of a turn. We're going to go into child's pose. Just sinking, keeping your knees uh, either hip or a little bit further width apart. Start to slowly sink onto your mat. Resting your head. Nice deep breaths. Wriggling those fingers around a bit. And maybe start to claw them forward to the top of your mat. And then my favorite part of this pose is taking your hands together and making almost like a shark fin on the back of your head. And then you start to feel this lovely stretch in the back of your neck and also starting to extend down a bit of your tailbone. So stay in that shark fin position. Breathing in and out. You can give your neck a little bit of, of massage while you're here. And then slowly start to push 
your way up to a seated position. Good. Then we're gonna come to a standing position. So we're gonna do our first uh, Surya Namaskara, which is, in, is a sun salutation. So coming to the top of your mat, standing in a Tadasana pose, mountain pose. And here before we start any movement, we're just gonna start thinking about some grounding cues. And these little kind of mental notes um, you can keep with you throughout your entire practice and in, in whatever asana you're in, because actually it's applicable to all. It comes back to focusing on your stability and reminding yourself that you are connected with your two feet, of course. Um, but that once you get into more advanced positions, uh, it becomes just a lot easier. So standing at the top of your mat, you can close down your eyes if you choose to, keep them slightly open. So think of the four corners of your feet pushing into the earth. Your inner arches lifting up slightly. The fronts of your shins curling in towards each other. The backs of your legs broadening. Your inner thighs rolling in. Your outer thighs rolling out. And coming upwards, you can find this kind of Uddiyana Bandha, which is this upward flying motion. And it's basically as if you were holding in a pea. So that's kind of, it's a very slight, slight feeling. Um, you should just start to feel a little bit of a lock down here. And then moving upwards along your side bodies, start to feel them extending. Feeling the tucking of your lower ribs, the broadening of the chest, the extension through your neck, and your shoulder blades melting down your back. And then finally, the last bit of lift through your head. And good. So that's grounding cues. You're not really supposed to feel a huge physical adjustment in those, but they're just kind of reminders of stability. So standing at the top of your mat, inhale, lift your arms over your head. Exhale, forward fold. Good. And your feet should really just be hip width apart. Nice and comfortable. Inhale, halfway lift. So coming to a, that flat tabletop back. And keeping a little bit of a bend in your legs here, you don't wanna lock them out necessarily. And then exhale, forward fold again. Good. Inhale all the way up again, arms reaching up and overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway left, inhale. And then exhale, plank, high plank. So Reminding yourself of those grounding cues, but instead of the four corners of your feet, now it's maybe the four corners of your hands. And this is a very strong position. So you want to avoid splaying out your shoulder blades. And by pushing the ground away, and at the same time, kind of following that broadening of the shoulder movement, you can find this very stable tabletop position. 
Good. From here, in an exhale, we're gonna lower our body slowly to the ground, coming all the way to our bellies. And then here you can take baby cobra, keeping your hands right by your rib cage, lifting upwards, chest broad, facing forward, Good. You can also choose to push up into upward facing dog. So same kind of opening up the chest, but your thighs, which are nice and engaged, begin to lift off of your mat. Good, exhale. We're gonna come into a downward dog position. And then here you can start to pedal out a bit. Move from side to side. Hopefully you should be feeling a little bit warmer than you did at the beginning of the class. Good. So we're gonna lift our right leg from here up to the sky into a three-legged dog. And then on an exhale, step them in between your two feet. Coming up into warrior one. Arms reaching up to the sky. And then you kind of want to shift your hips a little bit. So there's a tendency to bring your right, sink really into your right hip, but not tuning it back and making sure that your hips are level by pushing forward your left hip at the same time. And also think about bringing your tailbone down slightly, keeping those abs nice and engaged, and then also bringing some space between your ears and your arms. Good. And we're going to open up into warrior two. So you can shift your feet a little bit around, maybe widen the stance from warrior one. Breathing here, sinking a little bit deeper into that right knee. One more breath here. And then we're gonna push forward, maybe bring our palms facing upwards into reverse warrior. Bring that hand right up to the sky. Good, and then one more breath here. And then cartwheel your hands forward. Kick back high plank. And then high plank to low plank. This is your vinyasa, your flow. So you can again go all the way to the earth and then push up into baby cobra. Or you can go down, not touching your belly, push up into upward facing dog. And then all of us meeting again together at downward facing dog. Good. So we're gonna do the same on the left side now. Left leg kicking up, stepping in between the hands. Warrior one. Side body strong, tucking that tailbone. Opening into warrior two. Shifting the speed around if you need. Reverse your warrior. Then cartwheel your hands down to the earth. High plank to low plank. On an exhale, upper dog cobra. Inhale, exhale. Downward facing dog. 
Wonderful. So this time it's going to be a little bit quicker going through the motions and that's why it's called flip. <laughs> right leg face up, step through the hands, push up warrior one. Good, nice and strong. Warrior two, exhale, reverse warrior, inhale. Exhale, go through your flow, high to low. Left leg up. Step it through your hands. Good, push up into warrior one. Open up warrior two. Reverse. And then cartwheel your hands. High plank, low plank, you know the drill. <sighs> Wonderful. All right. So then here, we're gonna either hop, step, tiptoe to the top of your mat. Inhale, hands up. Reaching towards the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Good. And then here for our first little fiery pose, we're gonna go into Utkatasana, which is chair pose. So it's exactly how it sounds, um, as if you were sitting onto a little chair. So from down here, Forward fold, inhale, lift the body up, and then keep those hips down as if you were sitting onto a chair. And again, like warrior one, you wanna create that space between your arms and your ears. So kind of like an internal rotation of your hands will create that space. Just like that. Wonderful. So here we are in chair pose. Very fiery pose. One more breath here. And then exhale, release. Forward fold. Good. Then when we're here, we're just gonna step back into high plank. Good. Pushing the hips upward into downward facing dog. And then this is going through the crescent lunge series. So another kind of flow sequence. Um, it's focused with a bit more, more twists. So right leg up. Step it in between the hands. And then you're gonna come up into a high crescent lunge. So that's keeping your feet exactly where they are right now. Toes facing forward. And you're just simply gonna push up. Same arms as warrior one. Good. And if this feels a little bit too tough on your back hamstrings or maybe your ankle, you can lower your left knee to the ground. This works perfectly fine too. And then here we're gonna bring our hands to heart center. We're gonna lean the body forward and then shift and turn towards your right knee. And then here you can rest your elbow on your right knee just to give a little bit of support. And your neck should be nice and neutral or looking to the sky, preferably just not to the ground. Good, one more breath here. Come back to heart center. 
you're going to release your hands. And then using the power of your back leg, you're going to push into standing splits. It sounds a little bit scary than it actually is. We're not actually going to do splits. So right leg in front, pushing off that back leg, hand reaching for the mat. And this leg just simply pushes up into the air. You got this. Good. One more breath here. And then exhale, foot back down to the ground. Then we're going to push up into warrior two. So just like this, sinking into that right knee. Again, reversing the warrior. Nice and strong, that right hand reaching to the back of the room. And then instead of cartwheeling the hands down, we're gonna go into an extended side angle. So that looks a bit like this, just like that. Again, that same elbow resting on your knee, your left arm shooting towards the side of the room. And like a ballet dancer, instead of keeping your arm here in front of you, open up your chest. Nice neutral gaze. Great. Then from there, you can shift your body to a high plank, high plank to low plank, go through your flow. Good. I'm gonna do the other side. Left leg up to the sky. Step it in between the hands. Push up into high crescent lunge. Again, that sensation of tucking the tailbone in. Extending through the side bodies all the way up through your fingertips. Core is engaged. As you bring your hands to heart center, twist towards your left. Good. Remember to breathe. Going right back to heart center. Hands reaching out, standing splits, nice and strong through your right leg, up. It's important again, not to lock out your left knee. Keep a nice little healthy bend in it. We're gonna drop that back foot into warrior two. Reversing your warrior. And then extended side angle. Reaching that right hand forward. Your base is nice and strong. Good. From here, drop down, high plank to low plank. Go through your flow. Amazing. So you'll find yourself in downward facing dog. And then from here, you can either tiptoe your way to the top of the mat, or maybe for a nice little change up, you can start to walk your hands back towards your feet. 
Good. We're going to come into a standing position. You can be at the top of your mat or the middle of your mat, whatever works. So again, standing in Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Nice, even base, hip width apart. And then from here, we're gonna reach our hands upwards towards the sky. Inhale. The fingers will meet. You can take them with your thumbs just crossed over like so. And then we're going to start to go in an upwards first and then over motion just to the side. And I say upwards first because you don't want to have that kind of that pinching in your right side as you as you shift your body weight over. And trying to keep your chest as open as possible. If you feel yourself sinking or facing towards the ground, just try to open up your arms so that you have the entire room in front of you. Good. One more breath here. Back to center. And from here, we're going to go into Eagle Pose, Garadasana. Uh, we're going to take from here, our right hand is going to swing under our left. You can keep it just like so, or you can go into a full bind. If your elbows, your body shape allows you to do that, your great flexibility, go for it. Um, otherwise, just keep that right arm underneath your left. Then you're going to kick up your right knee, and then that right leg is going to go over the left. And then same as if you were in Ukutasana, I'm just going to sink into a chair. Good. And again, with your legs, if you're super flexy, you can bind your right leg around your left, but that's absolutely not necessary. And then this is a lot of weight, obviously, on your, on your left leg. So to help that, um, also engage your right leg as to feel kind of an equal pressure. And one more breath. And then release and shake out that leg. Good. We're gonna do the same on the other side. So arms reaching up to the sky. Maybe crossing your thumbs over the less intuitive way. And then you're going to start to sink towards the left side. Good. And that upwards and over motion. And back to center. Left hand is going to swing under right. Left leg is going to go over right. And start to sink slowly and slowly into that beautiful eagle pose. And then here, also don't let your elbows kind of sink down towards your chest. You kind of give it some pressure, some upward moving pressure, and try and level out your, your elbows with your shoulders. So bringing upwards. One more breath here. And release. Beautiful. And then for our next pose, we're going to go into Vrittasana, tree pose. So taking your right foot, 
bringing it either above your knee or below your knee, whatever you find more comfortable, and having it rest there. Then you're going to take your hands, and this is a very um, ex full of expression kind of pose, so you can either choose to keep your hands at prayer, you can hold them behind your back, you can go into a full-on tree position and extend your hands outward as if they were branches. But it's up to you. And then here, the point of this pose really is to gain more proprioception, so self-awareness of where your body exists in space. So. The real challenge of this pose is being able to hold this, but then beginning to slowly shut down your eyes and manage to balance. You find that greater awareness. And if you fall out of your position, that's totally fine. You need to try and do things. Nice deep breaths here. Good. Slowly bring your right foot to the ground and then do the same with your left. So upper inner thigh or shin or whatever expression you feel right today. Your foot is on your inner thigh. Make sure you have that engagement so that you're not just putting all the weight into your right hip, but right? you're contracting that right quad. And that should help also with stability. And finding some peace in the stillness. One last breath. Exhale, release the position. Good. Shake out your arms and legs a little bit. Good. Now we're going to go down towards the mat again. Arms reaching up overhead. Forward fold. Good. Halfway lift, high to low plank. This will be your last vinyasa of the class. Make it a good one. High to low, nice and strong through your arms. Up dog or cobra, and then downward facing dog. Beautiful, good. And then from here, we're gonna go into dolphin pose. So this is a, an amazing, upper body strengthening pose. From here, bringing your elbows down so you have your forearms resting on the mat. You'll feel quite a bit of weight in your shoulders. I won't have you guys hold this pose for too long. Good. One more breath here. Good, exhale, and then drop your knees to the earth. Then from here, we're gonna go into puppy pose. So begin to slide your hands out to the front of your mat, 
kind of let your chest sink in. Good. You should feel a lovely stretch. Your upper thoracic area of your back. You can rest your head on the mat or keep your gaze forward. And then from this puppy pose, we're gonna go to a tabletop position, just lifting the body up nice and strong. And then taking your right leg, we're gonna move into pigeon pose. So right knee comes up towards your chest and then you're kind of kind of shimmy it. Shimmy that knee in between your hands so that your leg is at a 45 degree angle, I would say. And then that back leg is extended straight backwards. You can take a little look behind you to make sure it's nice and straight. And keep both of your toes flexed. This is a very relaxing position, um, but it's really important to keep all parts of your, your legs contracted so that you're getting a safe stretch. So then from here, you can start to move your body down if you want to hold this position, or maybe you don't want to rest your head. I can come all the way down to the ground, resting on top of your hands. Breathing nice and deeply here. And then we're gonna come out of this pose and then do a little switcheroo of the legs. Right leg comes back, then left knee in between the hands. Do the same little check with your right leg, making sure it's nice and straight. That foot is in line with your leg. Flexing your toes, that can be pointing your toes, doing ballerina toes, whatever you like. And then slowly finding your way to the mat on your elbows or head on the earth. Feeling that beautiful stretch in your adductors and your hip flexors. And then from here, we're gonna swing our right leg around into half kingfish pose. So that right leg swings around and will come to your left hip. Not exactly to your left hip, but around it. You're gonna shift yourself a little bit so your hips are nice and straight. And once you're here, you can take left arm up. And then you're gonna Twist towards your right side. Uh, your left hand, the left arm is like a lever on your right knee, giving you that extra little push to twist. Good. And if this stretch is too intense, you can also just kind of cradle your right leg nice and close to your body. Maintaining a straight back
and switching your legs around. Right leg under left. Hugging that knee in close to you. Or right arm lifting up and then twisting towards the left side of your body. We're gonna do a Pashimottanasana. So that's just extending your legs out in front of you. And you do wanna sit on top of your hip bones and that's kind of a very elusive thing to say. It's not very specific. So what I would do is kind of starting as if you were shifting or walking on your sit bones towards the front of your mat. By doing so, you'll find yourself that you're sitting right on top of them. This is important in the stretch because you don't want to offload a lot of tension into your lower back. That's what we're trying to avoid. So by sitting on top of your sit bones, you can allow for kind of an extension of your spine instead of a crunching. So again, sitting straight, and it's again, the upward and over motion. So you can keep your hands right by your side. You can have them sitting on top of your quads, or you can even keep them right towards your, your calves. But either way, depending on your flexibility, you're going to lift and then start to shift your body forward. Taking nice deep breaths. As your practice is coming to an end. Remember to keep those toes nice and flexed. And actually engaging the quads can now allow you to receive a little bit of a deeper stretch. Beautiful. So from here, we're gonna go into Savasana. I schedule it to be around 10 minutes long. If that's maybe too long for you, you're a little bit restless, that's totally fine. Uh, but I find Savasana is a really good way to recover and kind of reflect on uh, whatever practice you experience and any kind of emotions that came up during that time. So here you're just going to lie on your back. Palms maybe facing upwards. Feet maybe this time a little bit wider than hip width apart. And just find your stillness. You can shut your eyes down. Start to focus on that beautiful breath that you guys have.
All right, if you slowly want to bat open those eyes, give your fingers a little wriggle, your toes a wriggle. And kind of come over to your right side into that fetal position. And then slowly find your way up. To a seated position. Bring your hands together, heart center. Thank you for sharing this practice with me. It's been a lovely morning and I appreciate your time.
bringing your thumbs to your third eye. Make sure you're staying safe, sane, and supported during these unprecedented times. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. See you next time.